Hey, I'm Matt Dinsdale of the Coca-Cola Madden Axe, and this is WLA Weekly. Hi and welcome to WLA Weekly. We're in Coquitlam at the Palace on Poirier. I'm your guest host Nick Bazer and filling in for Tally Campbell. We're going to talk about the start of the playoffs, look at some things to watch, and also talk to Coquitlam's Matthew Dinsdale and Jesse Guerin. We started things off talking with Matthew Dinsdale. I'm here with the Coquitlam Adnax, Matthew Dinsdale. Matt, you went straight from junior to the Calgary Roughnecks last season before playing your first season in the WLA this year. Are there any differences between the WLA and the NLL? Yeah, I think the NLL is built for a little bit of a faster game. You know, they've they've implemented some new rule changes to kind of to make the speed uh, of the game a little bit faster for the fans and to to keep the the ball in play. And um, you know, the the bigger floors playing on the NHL uh, size rinks and the NLL and stuff. Um, and uh, the the players in the NLL, they're you know they're all professional players. They're all they're all smart guys. They've all they've all been in the league, and you just gotta think on your feet a little bit quicker. Yeah. And Matt, I'm calling you Matthew Denzel right now, but everybody else seems to call you Marty Denzel. Can you explain the reason behind that? Uh, it's just an old nickname that stuck with me. When I when I played a novice as a kid, uh, we had a few Matthews on the team, so so one of the coaches started calling me Marty, and it's it's just stuck. And what do you think about the pressure, for example, in the situation you're in right now, facing the top seeded Langley Thunder, and this is your first time in the WLA, so it's a whole new feeling, and as I mentioned before, the pressure of that. Do you feel any of that on you right now, weighing on your minds, especially playing against older guys? No, nah, there's there's no pressure, you know. They're they're the they're the top team. They're the team to beat. So um, we just gotta we gotta play our game. Um, we didn't play a full 60 minutes last game, and and going into this one, we just gotta take it a period at a time and get our feet under us, get our sticks going, and, and try to come out to a faster start. And I think we'll be all right. And finally. What are the differences, for example, in the locker room? I know there's a lot of older guys in the WLA, of course, rather than junior. Where do you find yourself, like, what's your role in the locker room, basically, is what I'm asking? Well, as a rookie, I just do what I'm told, pretty much. You know, there's there's a lot of other guys that have a lot more experience than me, and I, I try to listen to them and, and take everything in that they're saying so that, um, you know, as, as years come, then I can I can pass it on to, to guys coming up, being in my position right now. Thank you very much for doing this. Good luck in the rest of the series. Yeah, thank you. Now let's have a look at some things to watch. In the Victoria and Burnaby series, the three things to watch are the two Corys, Corey Small and Corey Conway, each had over 85 points with Small scoring 42 goals in 18 games. In game one, the two combined for 10 points on just 19 shots. And the Lakers are going to have a ton of trouble with these two and have to find a way to keep the ball out of their sticks if they want to have any chance of moving on to the next round. Stay out of the box. Burnaby has to be disciplined as the Shamrocks are the most dangerous team on the man advantage, scoring three times on the power play in game one and 42 times during the regular season. The Shamrocks finish off the year first in the power play department as the Lakers were down a man 117 times through the regular season and were shorthanded seven times in game one. The new guys. Lakers rookie Robert Church scored three times and added two assists in game one for Burnaby as Jason Jones, who was acquired from Coquitlam this year, recorded three assists. Church and Jones are just two of the first-time Lakers who have found their place in the lineup, just as rookie Scott Jones did during the regular season with 65 points, second in team scoring. Even though Burnaby doesn't have a ton of veteran Lakers, what they do have are a team of guys with a lot to prove, and that motivation alone makes this squad very unpredictable. On the other side in the Langley and Coquitlam series, your three things to watch are second periods. Coquitlam in their final regular season game after being down 7-2, were able to score 10 in the second and were able to pull through with a 13-12 win. The same thing happened in game one versus the Thunder. After being down 7-2 again after 20 minutes, they were able to score six straight in the second to make things very interesting. And even though they lost game one, they still showed that the Coquitlam Adnacks are very capable of breaking out at any moment. Monster McDonald. 
Langley goalie Brody McDonald was a beast during the regular season as he finished with the best goals against average and save percentage while recording eight wins in his 16 games played. At 6'7", he covers most of the net and Coquitlam is going to have a hard time getting anything to hit the twine behind McDonald. Three Pete? The Langley Thunder in the hunt for their third consecutive WLA championship and are hungry for their first Man Cup title. The Thunder have the same core group from the past two championships and finished first in league standings this year and have loads of playoff experience to boot which makes the Thunder the heavy favorites in these playoffs. I'm here with Quilla Madnax, Jesse Guerin. Jesse, you guys came into the series as the bottom seed at fourth place. You're facing the number one seeded Langley Thunder. Does that weigh on your minds at all? Um, not really. I mean, I feel like we've been underdogs all year um, after we made those trades. And uh, we just take a game at a time. And it um, feels like we've been in the playoffs for the last half of the year now. So, I mean, the pressure's on them. We're just going out there, going to have fun and see what we can do. You talked about the trades you guys made. For example, Dane Doby heading over to these Langley Thunder. Can you talk about how you guys had to replace them? I guess not necessarily replace them, even fill your roles and yourself as well, taking a bigger role on the team. How was that possible? And guys who are younger and first year, such as Marty Denzel, doing the same? Yeah, I mean, Doby's a great player, and you can't really replace him, but um, just everyone else had to step up. Everyone knew they were going to get more touches and more shots. And um, I think everyone's contributed a bit more, and that's what uh, got us to where we are. And what's the mindset in the locker room right now after game one happened and you guys lost that, unfortunately? Very close game, but you guys get ready for the rest of the series. What's the mindset at the moment? Um, I mean, it's a long series, and we all know that, so we're trying to stay positive, take the positives out of game one. We had a rough start, but we came back in the second. So um, we're just going to take it a period at a time here, and um, I think we'll be all right. Thank you very much, Jesse, for doing this. Yeah, thanks for having me. The first postseason game would get underway last Wednesday on July 31st, with the Burnaby Lakers making the trip out to Victoria to face the Shamrocks. After the first period, the Shamrocks led 5-2 with Corey Small getting two goals at the end of 20 minutes. He would continue that in the second with a shorthanded goal just a minute into the middle frame, which Victoria had little trouble as they outscored the Lakers to make it 9-4 after 40. Needing a huge third period, Burnaby Lakers rookie Robert Church scored just 44 seconds into the third period, as the Lakers would make it interesting with Church completing the hat-trick in the third, but the Vancouver Celts' Reese Dutch would get to himself to seal the victory in Game 1 for the Victoria Shamrocks. Dutch and Corey Conway would lead the Shamrocks with six points each in the 12-8 Victoria win. On the first day of August, the Langley Event Center would be busy hosting Game 1 between the Quitla Madnax and the Langley Thunder. The Thunder would come out in the first, scoring six unanswered goals in the first 10 minutes before finishing off the period with a 7-2 score. And it was much like the final game of the regular season between Burnaby and Coquitlam as the Adax bounced back by scoring six in the second with former Thunder player Brandon Goodwin getting two as Adam Schutz stopped all 14 shots he faced from the Thunder to make it 8-7 with just 20 minutes to go. And with the final period up for grabs, the top seeded Langley Thunder scored three in the third with former Adnac Dane Doby getting the game winner in the 10-8 Thunder win. Langley would have five players record three points with Ethan Iannucci getting three goals in game one. Thanks for watching this edition of WLA Weekly. For all your playoff dates and times, head on over to theboxrocks.com. And for all your local sports coverage, keep it locked to VSPN.ca. I'm Nick Bastian. Thanks for watching.